Thank you, Alan, uh, President Harris, ladies and gentlemen. I would uh, like to thank the AJC for honoring the contribution made by my late father, Konstantinos Mitsotakis, to the relationship between Greece and Israel. This indeed is a very special moment for our family. Konstantinos Mitsotakis passed away exactly a year ago, at the age of 99, that he left behind a very strong legacy of public service and a relentless commitment to the common good. A man of great vision, of great integrity, a man of principle, Konstantinos Mitsotakis not only spoke his mind with passion and conviction, but also exercised leadership with determination and resolve. Just 10 days after becoming Prime Minister of Greece in April 1990, the Hellenic Republic recognized the State of Israel. As was uh, demonstrated in the video, Greece was until then the only, the only member of the European Economic Community that had not done so. A month after Konstantinos Mitsotakis recognized the State of Israel, he made his first official visit as a Prime Minister to Israel. As obvious as the decision seems now, that was far from being the case 28 years ago because Greek public opinion was at the time staunchly pro-Arab and staunchly anti-Israeli. Yet Konstantinos Mitsotakis went against the tide. He did what was right for the interests of his country. He was, after all, a man of his word and a man of strong convictions. He had pledged during the campaign to recognize Israel as his first foreign policy decision immediately after he got elected. And he did exactly that. Since then, the relationship between Greece and Israel has grown progressively and steadily stronger on all fronts, political, economic, military, cultural, Geopolitical, I had the opportunity today to spend an hour with Prime Minister Netanyahu, reconfirming, reaffirming the depth of our strategic relationship. And this strategic nature of the relationship between Greece and Israel, between our two states, has subsequently, after 1990, been recognized by every Greek government. It is today supported by the majority of Greek parties, but most importantly, it is supported by the majority of Greek people. And it is my personal commitment to further strengthen this relationship in the future should the Greek people give me the opportunity of leading my country. <laughs> Greek and Israeli people have so much in common, this really should come as no surprise. I was, was listening to the music that was played right before you started. I thought, this is, this is Greek music. <laughs> and I know, that, I know that more than 600,000 Israelis every year choose to travel to Greece and come back with the best possible memories. And that should be no surprise because we have so much in common. We both have very long histories, defined by religion, by language, by our proximity to the Mediterranean Sea. Our nuclear family structures are very much alike, and our diasporas have framed the character of our nations. And as Konstantinos Mitsotakis understood all too well, we have so much to share and to learn from each other, so much to offer each other. My father said during his first visit to Israel in 1988, when he was still leader of the opposition, and I quote, 
The fate of our two people has crossed many times in the span of their thousand years history. We have lived through times in glory, of glory and times of catastrophe. But he said, our recent history has been marked by a common disaster we both mourn. The devastation of the thriving Jewish community of Thessaloniki by Nazi forces during the Second World War. My father would have been very proud that just a few days ago, on June 7th, the Greek parliament passed an amendment that clears the path for the construction of a Holocaust museum in Thessaloniki. An amendment which, of course, the party that Konstantinos Mitsotakis led and which I have the privilege today of being its leader, supported in full. Most of the world, indeed many Greeks, do not know that the percentage of Greek Jews killed during the Second World War is one of the highest in Europe. We should not forget that the vibrant Jewish community of Thessaloniki was almost entirely exterminated. And uh, I am uh, very proud that a younger generation of Greeks, but also of visitors to Thessaloniki, will soon be able to visit a state-of-the-art museum that will stand as a historic point of reference for the Greek Jewish community. A tribute to the memory of those who perished in the greatest atrocity the world has ever witnessed, but also a place where our children will be able to learn and reflect on the dangers that authoritarian regimes pose for entire societies. And this, I may add, is particularly important today, as authoritarian and populist forces are becoming more prominent throughout Europe and around the world. The rise of xenophobia, of nativism, of racism, of anti-Semitism. It's a reality today in Europe, unfortunately. It has to be confronted head on. And as a generation of leaders, like Konstantinos Mitsotakis, of leaders who witnessed firsthand the pain and suffering of the war, as this generation is slowly fading away, the responsibility of upholding their legacy passes to us. We can no longer afford to be timid or always politically correct. We must speak the truth, no matter what the consequences may be. And we must, we must fight for our values. Freedom, equality, tolerance, the rule of law. These are the foundations upon which our societies are built. It is our task, the task of our two people, not just to protect them, but to strengthen them. Let me conclude by one more quote by Kostandinos Mitsotakis, who expressed in his own words why this is so important. Our two people have the privilege and high responsibility to be those who continue two of the most ancient civilizations in the world. While mighty empires and, popul and populous nations in our region collapsed and disappeared from the face of history, our two people were able to survive and thrive because their existence relied on the same principle and ideals. The elevation of the human being as an absolute value the establishment and the defense of democracy, and the never-ending struggle for the conquest and protection of freedom. On behalf of my entire family, on behalf of my party, but I can speak on behalf of the Greek people, I would like to thank you very much for this great honor. Thank you very much.